What's up, guys? How y'all doing? I am here in the middle of a rental project, right? <laughs> this is Knowledge by Nikki with 1K. I am uh, tired, guys. I'm tired. and uh, But it's a good tire. It's a tire because I believe I have some things figured out. Not everything, but I believe I do have some things figured out, guys. Uh, I... In this two months that we were actually down, I really enjoyed the time I had to think, to think, to process, to kind of figure out what I needed to do with the businesses that I have so far, um, where I need to expand, where I need to retract back. Uh, let me tell you the one thing that I did, and I know this is maybe going to strike some of you all a little weird, but I am your salon owner. Uh, business strategist, coach, slash mentor, slash whatever you want to call me in. I have had to really rethink the salon experience. When I say rethink it, you see I'm walking through. This is this is one of the places that I own, and it's a mess because I just had walls put up. We're repainting. We're doing some of everything, and it's, it's a really small place, but it, it produces. It really does produce. Uh, what I have really been thinking about and i i, I should have did a before and after guys because this place was like oh my god it was like destroyed like really destroyed um and let, on the side note let me say this real quick i am so my heart is so heavy right now from all of the looting and all of the things that are going on uh i i knew it was going on and i tried to go you see that area back there that looks like it's got that color in it i needed to replace the door guys i could not even get to any of the Home Depots near me because they're all shut down. They're all, it, it, it blocked off. And I'm like, are you serious? So I couldn't even go buy a door, okay? I actually need some doors for my closet as well in the back where the furnace is. I couldn't even go buy doors. So, you know, my heart is heavy and, and that's a whole nother subject another day. But, uh, I, you know, I, and I think I'm, I, it's heavy because I'm such a passionate uh, entrepreneur and I'm really passionate about business. And I'm like, we just came from, COVID, you know, people just were able to open back up. And yesterday, I, I had a hard time getting home. They had shut everything down. It just, my heart is just heavy. But that's another subject for another day. But I do want to say that um, I am not so sure. And y'all, hear me when I say this, y'all. I had to tell my assistant this yesterday. And I, you know, I can keep it, to, keep it raw to her. But I am not sure that the traditional salon, the way we've been doing it for, uh, I've been doing this 32 years, so at least that long, I'm not sure that that blueprint works anymore. I'm just not, guys. Let me explain what I mean. Um, it is a very rare find, and don't get me wrong, I do know some, I know some wonderful traditional salons where everybody kind of you know, works in there together and they, they have that wonderful family. And these are booth renting salons I'm talking about. Uh, they have that wonderful family structure and, and, and it works. And, you know, they've really found this great, meaning the owners have really found this great connection of people that all vibe and, and it's great. And, and I come from that. So I can honestly say it is something, if any of you all on here have ever experienced being in a salon, and I'm talking about with some people in it, like six, seven, eight, nine, ten workers other than yourself, and, and you all have had this connection and this energy, and you all really cheer each other on to work. And if you have ever experienced that, there's nothing like it. I I, I am glad that I have I had the privilege of my very first salon being that type of salon, and I stay there for years until I pretty much open my own and and it's nothing like it but let, let's talk about today let's talk about today guys um it's not that way today guys it's just not i don't know if you all realize that uh i do a lot of reading statistical stuff and today uh i think it was last year that the bureau of labor and statistics bureau uh some data they were doing on where the work industry is going they said by 2035, I don't know if you all know this, by 2035, they said, I want to say 85%, it was something above 80, will be 1099 employees. They will not be W-2. That means that when you think 1099, think independent contractor. Think people who want to some, in, in some way work for themselves. They just do. 
And the reason I'm bringing that up today is because I am a salon owner, entrepreneur, business strategies coach. And I find myself, because I'm helping people to maintain these salons, to um, enhance them, to build them, to grow them, to all that good stuff. I have two salons that I've been coaching for about six months. They're in totally different states. And based off of what their needs were, I got them to do what I did. And I'm going to show you. I, I wish I had shown you that before. But uh, I actually got them not to totally sweet it up. I, I do believe sweets in some capacity is where the industry is going. I do. Now, I don't believe that every sweet building should be a private suite, meaning everybody in a box, don't have idea with each other. That I don't believe that that's necessarily the answer, but I want to say this to you all. I'm going to be talking about this, I think, all week. Uh, there is something called semi-private suites. Uh, there are all types of suites. It's not just private in a box with all your, your everything, your shampoo bowl, your dryers, close the door, lock the door, don't speak to each other. That's not what I'm talking about. What I need everyone, especially my owners that are watching this, and this is what COVID-19, I already knew this. But COVID-19, because I got a chance to really sit down and talk to some people and, and really read and learn some stuff and talk to some people who have sweet. I have one guy I know that he has uh, several uh, suites and then he has some traditional salons as well. And him and I had this conversation and what he decided to do, and I did, I was already going to do it, but he just confirmed it because I value what he says he said, I'm not going to make my traditional salon a suite because I don't believe, and I'm agreeing with him, everybody don't want to work in a box. That's a personality thing. If you're an introvert, you're fine with a box. But if you're an extrovert and you want to connect with people, being in a box is not going to help you grow. So what he decided to do, and it was interesting because I was already in process of doing this, he cubicalized. That means he basically is saying that the, the world we have now, which is true, has a 1099 mentality, especially the millennials. Nobody really wants to work for anybody. Think about it, guys. The whole purpose of people going booth rental is because they really want to work for themselves. Now, I understand that sometimes they get that twisted and they want to work for themselves until like but when COVID-19 hit and then they want to be an employee and not have to pay rent because they're not working. Well, working for yourself means that you pay the whole cost to be the boss. That means just because you ain't working, just like the owner, your landlord has to pay for that place. You got to pay for your space. So I know how they flip. I know how booth renters can flip and think, I don't want to do that though. They want. It's almost like a kid living in your house that want to be grown, but then want to be a kid and, and lean on you when it's convenient or they don't want to do something. I get that. But what we talked about, me and this gentleman, was that if you want to entertain this, okay, and I'm, I'm going to show you what I did. If you want to entertain the possibility of creating the both worlds within a space. So let me tell you what I did. I'm going to walk you around and then I'm going to talk as I'm doing this. You see this space that's behind me. This wall behind me was not there. This whole place was just wide open, right? Wide open square. It's about 750 square feet. Not a big space, but I have, I have done well in this space. Originally, I was going to make this two spaces. So if you come out here, you see that this whole wall was not here. It was just open. And originally, I was going to split this in two and make this like four equal spaces. But because of where stuff was, it just didn't make sense. So then if you go over here, you see it's a bunch of junk in here. And we're going to have it all out because we painting and doing all kind of stuff. I have to have this stuff. This is a smaller room here. And you notice I did not put, I did not enclose them. I didn't enclose them. I didn't put walls on the front. I could have put accordion doors. It's all kind of things you could do on the front. I didn't do that. This is one of the places that I have. Then you have, this is a slightly bigger space here. You see that? It's the, excuse the junk. And you see, they'll be here in a minute. You know, they told me they're going to be here early. My early is a little different than other people's early. Okay. And then, and it's just three. That's it. It could have been four, but I made it three on purpose. Okay. Then if you go back here you see this is I, I everybody has their own bowl but it's it's hold on but it's open so see i couldn't even buy doors for that guys because home depot is down that bowl came down you see it's just two bowls here and then the bigger suite is going to have its own bowl okay then i just had him real simple 
this wall right here i have when i say this going it's like a straight gonna be a show enough kitchen like i have um a cabinet that comes out the wall it flips up and down i have uh cooking utensils uh conduction hot plates because i believe we got to do better we got to eat better we can't just keep eating all this junk all the time right we got to eat better so look i got my gym shoes on guys and i actually have plastic over my gym shoes i forgot to wear my other shoes and this is just a bathroom so this is 750 square feet okay that i turned into three basically three suites it was going to be four but i turned it into three and they're priced differently this one i'll be in this one i have a girl that already wants to take this one she told me in october i have actually several people that i've talked to well, my husband asked me i see he's watching me he asked me this morning about the girls that i had talked to and are they coming on board this is what i told him which is real interesting now i had these people sweating me wanting to come work all of this you know as soon as we were able to get back open but i put this out there to them and i did it in a real nice professional way i asked them what was their agreement with where they were coming from with how they were going to pay the money back all three of them told me i didn't believe it all three of them told me they hadn't even had that conversation with their owner yet so i told them real nicely i said well i'll tell you what I want you to have that conversation because what I don't want to do, I'm not, I, I would love to have you, one of them especially, I would love to have you, but I'm not here for you to jump ship and not pay what you owe to where you came from. So the thing that's interesting is all three of these girls were sweating me and then when I text them back after I said that, now I ain't hearing from them, okay? Which is cool because that's not what this is. I did a whole Facebook on this about be careful salon owners, about people jumping ship. I know you need the money. I know you need people to fill these chairs, but it's a character thing. If they gonna jump ship and leave that one hanging and they done made promises, they gonna pay. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not interested. So that's cool with me because it'll, it'll let me kind of do this in, in stages, you know, cause, uh, cause we all ain't working, right? So I'm spending money and I don't have as much coming in as I'm used to. So what I did though, was I broke this into what I call open cubicle suites. That's where we're going. This is called a semi-private suite. Now, this one will actually have a bowl. I got a guy that the bowl is going to actually be mounted here. He's going to be able to ride it. So this one, because the girl that wants this, and as long as, you know, I'm working in it too, uh, and I only work every other week, two days, but she, this one will be a little more money, obviously, because it'll have the bowl in it. She'll have area for waiting. You see, I got shelves up there, plus some of those bookcases are going to go in here. So this will be for somebody that kind of like really runs their whole business, got a lot of retail. You see, I got, I got this whole thing up here, and I'm stuff is just everywhere right now. But this is what I, I realize is where we're going, and I just want you all to entertain it. What this does, because let me explain to you the difference. Everybody that I knew that owned suites, I talked to them before COVID-19, shut us all down or, or that some of them were already shut down the rest were getting shut down the people that were in these suites and i'm talking about the private suites as well as the semi-private suites semi-private first of all it could mean several things it could mean you could have a totally enclosed suite with all your stuff in it but no door okay or you can have what we call community areas like this wall right here that you all see I got all the dryers coming that drop from the ceiling, okay? And then I have a bench that'll be there would also have a back. So that could mean you, you have maybe your shampoo bowls in your suite, and then you maybe have the dryers outside. Uh, you have community areas. And the reason you do this intentionally is because community areas now become the place where people who want to work together, so they want to kind of be together but separate, actually can come together, congregate, talk, eat, whatever do whatever they do but they actually still have their own little hole i want to call it to go into so what was different about covid 19 uh when people all got shut down none of the people that i talked to that own suites had any issues with any of the people in the suites feeling as if they didn't have to pay rent none of them it was it was interesting to me something about when you give a person their own box, their own space, maybe it's a territorial thing. You know, we are territorial. Think about where you go. When you go to church, you sit in the same spot. When you go somewhere to the mall, you park in the same spot. We are territorial people. We're creatures of habit. 
what I noticed was, even if it wasn't a totally private suite with a door that locks and it's 24 seven and all your stuff is in there and you ain't got to fool with nobody, people have an entirely different mindset when you give them their own space they automatically become more responsible. They think of it as theirs and they have to take care of it. It totally changes the mindset of the individual. So I'm not saying all y'all should run out and wall up everything, but what I am saying, especially now with the whole social distancing thing, I'm seeing people buying all this plexiglass and putting plexiglass in between people. And, and oh yeah, Jason, that's my boy there. Yes, Jason. Oh, I do charge more for rent. I charge, but, but I don't charge more just because it's walled up. You also have to create value with this. Like the people that come here, they'll have 24 seven access. There'll be some other things that they'll have privy to also. That's something you have to learn. You come to one of my trainings. I have a actual training coming up called the 24 seven salon. It's about what you allow the people that work there to do, as well as what you allow outsiders to come into your space and also do. This is something that I want you all to think about. If the, the average or 80% or more of the workforce is going to be a 1099, you have by, I think they said 2035 is what it said, then you have to think in terms of people really don't want to work for anybody. They really want their own space. They like a lot of choices. They like a lot of things. And I want to free some of you booth renters up or the booth renter salon owners. When you have an open concept salon and it's booth rental, I, it, it must just be the psychology of people. They get it twisted. They, for some reason, act like they're guests at your house and you find yourself still having to do a lot of the same things for them that you do for a commission worker when that's not what they paying you for. So the something about the psychology of when you put a wall between them. So when I'm all the way back here in my space, this is mine. This is my, but there's no door. So I can literally, you walk by, hey girl, you come here and sit. We still talk, but this is my space. And when you look at something as yours, you tend to generally take better care of it. You tend to understand the responsibilities more that come with it. So. The guy that I told you I was talking to that has both, he talked about what has changed. He already got regular suites with doors and all that. He talked about the ones that he had that were traditional salons that he just walled up, just basically like office cubicles. He said the entire morale, the ownership mentality, it totally changed. Even people who didn't care, you got people that'll walk, literally, you got people that will walk in a bathroom, in a salon that they work in, We'll see crap all over the place and walk right out of the door or walk right out. Like, it ain't my spot, it ain't my bathroom, but it's you and your clients that use it. There, I have a book on my site, and I'm going to add this to it. It's called The New Salon Blueprint. It deals with everything that you need to do when you talk about being a value as a salon owner in this day and industry. You, you still have to learn how to create togetherness, unity, a connection, but still give people more than just a station against the wall and a mat and a chair, because I'm telling you, they want more than that. I think your tenancy in your business will also change. Right now, the average time that a salon uh, a worker, 1099 person stays in a salon is maybe, look, uh, let me turn the air back on. It's getting hot. It's maybe two years, guys. That's it. You're good if you get two years out of them. But when you talk about suites, guess what, guys? It doesn't matter whether they're private or semi-private. When you talk about suites, the average person stays in a suite for five years or more. Did you know that? Five years or more. I know a guy right now, he owns a solo. I worked in it for a little while. All but maybe four or five of the tenants, because they had family moved and got sick, stuff like that have been in there since he's been open. He's been open now almost 10 years. So I need you to think about tweaking your dream a little bit. That, that's really what this is about. I know you dreamed of this. And, and the beautiful thing, you can still have this team and this family unity and what, whatever the reason was that you opened your salon, you still can have it. 
but you still want to survive as a business owner. You still want to be able to keep people there for a decent amount of time. You want people to be responsible. You still want I, everybody I talk to, every salon owner, male, female, I don't care what it is or who they are. They all basically want some of the same things, but there is a science to this. And I've done a video many times on market disruption. It would almost be like right now to buck that system and to not even entertain the possibility would be like somebody out here saying like office max, they won't match Amazon. Well, don't, that's not going to make people buy from you. Amazon is a Amazon is who it is. I ain't even got to go into that. Amazon disrupted this market in a way that no one ever could. And what has happened is if you can't beat them, you got to join them. You have to understand how market disruption changes everything. This business, th this is, I'm also going to have where you can do chair on demand in here. I'll have it where people can come in. They can work a day. They can work about an hour, that type of stuff. You, you have to understand guys that if you want to stay in business, some of the ways that you thought that worked back when I was in, you know, early in the game, and I loved it. I'm glad I had that opportunity, but they don't work anymore, guys. They don't work. And I got you all spinning your wheels, just can't keep people in there, can't get people in there. And it's, it's not that you're a bad person, not that you're a bad owner, but what you have not done is evolved. What you haven't done is adapted to the world we live in today. That's just what it is, guys. You have to adapt. You have to literally, look, I was accustomed to working by myself for like for years, but I realized it's like, why? You know, and I don't have no problem delegating. I'm not a person, I'm not a do-it-yourself kind of girl, but it made no sense when I had people that really did want to work with me. But I needed to be able to create an environment of responsible people, people that still want to be somewhat connected, but yet still want to have their own. So I believe, <clears throat> me and this gentleman I'm talking about, and he's Caucasian, I believe that the future salon is going to look very much like this. I do. I believe the salon of the future is going to be very much multiple independent people working within the same space that still have rooms they can connect. You can have, you know, party rooms, you can have <clears throat> different kitchen areas, you can keep all the dryers in the same space, you can keep all the shampoo, but it's, it's cheaper anyway, because then you ain't got to ride all that plumbing everywhere, but realistically, guys, I need you all to upgrade your dream, that, that's what I need, you know, how, you know how I got Apple, so you know how Apple is constantly like telling you to update, I need y'all to update, <clears throat> seriously guys, I know you like the last update and you be pissed, like I just learned this other one, now y'all done changed it, that I think the salon industry out of every industry I deal with is the industry that fights change. They fight it more than anybody that I've ever seen. They fight it, but you're losing. You're losing the battle, guys. You put sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars into this, and and the the way that you want it to go is just not the way it works anymore. I am not one for telling anybody to give up their dream because ain't nobody ever made me give up mine and I wasn't going to do it anyway. But what I am telling you, my salon owners, the people who make the decisions, is that there may be some things, even if it isn't this, there may be some things that you're going to have to do to stay in the game. And honestly, now with the whole social distancing, these walls was cheaper than plexiglass. I'm going to be honest with you, plexiglass, decent plexiglass ain't cheap. These wall, putting these walls up was cheaper than plexiglass. I could have somebody put some A number drywall and two by fours and a decent contractor that don't charge a bunch of money. Put you some walls up if you want to just separate people and you give them now their own semi-private space. That, that's just, and this is more of an opinion. This is not a fact, but it is a fact that people in 2035, and I actually think before that because social media and digital marketing has given people options where they don't have to just be stuck in one place making money they just don't have to do that they can move around you're gonna have you see more chair on demand places than ever before you got places where they literally that's all they do is rent chairs by the hour by the day uh because so, people don't want to pay full rent uh for the whole week if they're not going to be there this is where we are guys it's where we are 
So if you don't want your salon to die or you want your business to kind of go to another level and be more catered to where the industry and the world is going, then you're going to have to make some adjustments, guys. That's all I'm saying. You're going to have to make some adjustments. Go on knowledgebynikki.com. I have a really good book called the new salon blueprint it's uh it's basically a it's a blueprint for people who own booth rental salons but they want to create this cohesiveness this synergy between booth renters so it's not this whole every man for himself mentality and it works guys this i've, I've seen it work many times i've done it it works well it works extremely well now the thing that also matters guys is you can't just bring anybody into your spot I've had several conversations with some of the names that I see up here and I keep telling people this, this is the reality. It's like dating. You can't just go get any man or any woman off the street and make them fit. You have to come up with a criteria. You have to imagine in your mind, what type of worker would I want here? And I need you to imagine their character. Think about character traits. Don't think about skill. It's like, man, I know some little girls Ain't seen the school that could run circles around me. And I'm a good stylist. But I need you to think about character. Things you will want in their character. Their value system. That, you need to think about that kind of stuff. And then there are many ways that you could actually go out. You'd have to actually, you can go also, if you need help with this, you could also go on my website, knowledgebynikki.com. I have a 90-minute business assessment that you could pay for while I break it down for you and give you the two. I can give you a whole lot in 90 minutes and, and kind of send you on your way if you don't want to do a full coaching scenario. But this is what you got to do. You got to find people that fit, not go get people and try to make them fit. But the only way you're going to be able to do that is to have some idea of what you want. You got to know what you want. I, that's one of the first questions I ask when I start coaching people. What is it that you really want? And the fact that you can't tell me, it's like riding around in a car, just up and down the street in circles, because you really can't tell me what you want. So how do we aim for it? There's no goal line. What, what are we running towards? And this is where you have to do some thinking. This is where you got to turn the clippers off. You got to put the shears down. You got to turn the blow dryer off. And you have to put some thought into this, guys. You have to give your business some of your time to think about it. I, I know we some of us that are salon owners slash service providers, we're so used to just doing, 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 doing. And then what happens is the business and the things you need to process and think about and structure and strategize and research and all that other good stuff, it falls by the wayside. And then you're constantly in the same cycle of people in, people out, up and down. Y'all know y'all know the spiel, right? So I need you to really think about that. Go on my website. I actually have uh, contracts you can get. I have um the the new salon blueprint is really good but i really want you all to think about the organization the actual physical organization of your salon uh if it would be financially feasible if you believe that this is a concept study at first don't just take my word for it if you believe this is a concept that would work i know a lot of you all again are trying to find the ways to if you don't have a big spot i mean you could only push people so far apart was it six feet apart i mean really and I want to see how long this is going to last. I really do. I want to see how long my fellow salon owners and barbershop owners are going to do this, right? But it's something now, this is the thing. Let's say you did want to take this concept. I have someone I talked to about that the other day. Yes, it is going to possibly minimize a chair or two. But the difference is when people feel like it's their space, it's theirs. Because actually, I'm going to have an accordion wall put here meaning the walls that you push back it doesn't have they don't ever have to close them if they don't want to but i will give people the option if you want to close them close them if you don't don't i want to give people the option of of closing them or not closing them you know but that that's what i want to be able to do but you charge more for these that's it. simple you just charge more and i actually have talked about that too which a lot of you all don't do you cannot come up with a weekly booth rental rate until you first know what all your expenses are a lot of y'all shooting from the hip uh, 150 $200 a week, does that really cover what it needs to cover, though? Does that really cover and still give you about anywhere from 15 to 30% profit? Does it do that? This is something that you need to consider. I also have that book on knowledgebynikki.com. It's called Booth Rental Versus Commission. It gives you the formulas and all that good stuff. But this is stuff that you need to think about, okay? 
Uh, I just want to see us win, guys. That's all I've ever done is is try to to give what I know and the lessons that I've learned and try to put them out there so everybody can win. That's all I want to see. But in winning, you have to adapt. You have to. You got to adapt. You got to change. You got to tweak that vision a little bit. You have to find a balance between pursuing your dream and also doing what works. You have to find that balance between the two. So uh, that's all I'm going to say today, guys, because as you can see, I got a whole lot that I need to be tending to. And they, they, them with coming early, yeah, we're going to see. Also, uh, you all see this? So keep going on my website. Let me show y'all something. Y'all see this right here? Y'all see that? That is about a thousand boxes of color that I am selling. Uh, I had, I, I, I had, I don't know how much color guys I'm getting ready to organize it. I'm blowing it out. Just go online. I have it on there about a weekend. Probably. Uh, I'm getting ready to organize it. I'm selling off $5 a box. No shipping. I don't care how many you get. I just ship it to you. Cause I just want to get rid of it. Cause I already got a lot of cut. This was just like overstock. So I'll be selling. It's literally, I thought it was 700, but when I looked at my inventory sheet, it's about a thousand boxes of color i'll show y'all again for y'all that's that, that that just came on y'all see this bag all that is in there right so i will be selling all this color so you go be able to go on my website i gotta organize it i'm gonna try to put the swatch on there because i know some of y'all if i tell y'all seven stroke four three y'all don't know what that is so uh i'm gonna see it's gonna take me a minute so I'm actually getting ready to organize it now because I need to get rid of as much as I can in here. I'm going to have a killer garage sale for my storage uh, next week or the week after. But I just want us to, to do better. OK, this is all I'm saying is consider the possibility of combining the 1099 mentality with the W-2 mentality. See, W-2 mentality is we all work together like a family and we're all employees, even though we're not. And you're the owner, even though you're, you, I really don't work for you because I'm a booth renter, but y'all get what I'm saying, right? A lot of us want that 1099 mentality as they, as though they're employees, but they're not. So just think about where you want your salon to go. If you're a new salon owner, this is really something you can use to know where you need to go. Uh, don't get so stuck in your, your vision of how you thought it was that it doesn't match where the world is it's almost like with products really when you're pricing your products unless it's something really really elite you got to go on amazon and see what it costs first you that's just what it is people will sit in your shop look at the product and then go on amazon and buy it so that's the world we're in it's called market disruption guys up uh, youtube i'm going to be doing something i'm going to teach you all how to do it with my girl carla uh, Tarkington, she's uh, too much hair on YouTube, and she's gonna be working with this. I'm, I'm gonna teach y'all how to have a YouTube party. I'm gonna teach y'all how to quit griping about YouTube and people go on YouTube. They go uh, YouTube ain't going nowhere. So quit crying about it. It ain't going nowhere. I'm gonna teach you how to use it. I'm gonna teach you how to use YouTube and have what I call a YouTube party. Really fun. I already got the flyer. Uh, I'm gonna train you on. I'm gonna show you what it looks like first. And then I'm going to train you on how to set it up. You're going to use YouTube. We, yeah, YouTube going to help you get customers, get people. Y'all ain't no need to gripe it about this stuff. Ain't no need. Look, it ain't, Amazon ain't going nowhere. YouTube ain't going nowhere. So if you can't beat them, you got to join them and learn how to utilize them so you can keep growing. So that's all I'm going to say. But I'm going to say toodaloo. And I will see y'all tomorrow. I'm going to talk about, I don't even know, because I wasn't even going to talk about this today. So tomorrow I'll be talking about something, but I'm actually tonight I'm teaching uh, how to do a virtual training on a dime, y'all. That means with no money. So I already got people signed up. I usually don't cut off the signups. It starts at 7 p.m. Central. I generally cut off the signups at about 5 p.m. because I don't need y'all flooding through and, and I'm trying to get set up and all that stuff. So if you still want to take that, it's like, I think it's like $39. You get the ebook, you get the three hour training. You also get the copy of the video that we did. You get the entire transcript, which is three hours, just like the actual uh, uh, time that we're training. So you get all of that, guys. I think it's like 39 bucks. You can go to knowledgebynikki.com if you're interested in that. Uh, just click the training tab, pay for it, and, and I'll send you your link. Okay, but peace out. I'm getting ready.